As explained last week, the parasha then, Chaye Sarah, the life of Sarah, was actually more about the life of Yitzchak. Sarah's life became more complete with her son carrying forward into the next generation, with his marrying Rivka and Rivka becoming the next matriarch. Taking the family, the connection to the one God, the commitment to the one God, the commitment to Judaism, taking it forward, taking us forward into the next generation. This week's Parsha, Toldot, which means generation or history, or even more so, that which we generate and produce in our lives, Toldot will take us into the next generation. The Toldot of Yitzchak and Rivka will be their two sons, as well as the deeds and achievements of their lives. And that is the subject of this section of the Torah, that is Toldot. And it is well worth each of us pondering this Shabbat, our own toldot, that which we generate and produce in our lives. It is at the beginning of this parsha when Rivka becomes pregnant. But even with knowing that she is pregnant, Rivka profoundly questions, why do I live? Why do I exist? Lama ze anochi? What a question. Quite a question for each of us to ponder. Why do I live? Why do I exist? What is the point of my life? It is not just enough that she is pregnant. It is not enough just to bring a new generation into this world. Of course, our future would not exist without that, but it is not enough. We have a responsibility, a responsibility to our ancestors of the past, a responsibility to make more meaningful our lives in the present, and of course, a responsibility to and for our future. It is not just a matter of bringing new children into the world, but it is a matter of teaching them right. It is a matter of guiding them on a more righteous path. Rivka seems to deeply ponder this. She knows that she is pregnant. She will be having a child or children as the case may be and bringing forth a new generation. But even with that, she questions. Lama ze anochi. What a question. Quite a question for each of us to ponder, why do I live? Why do I exist? What is the point of my life? Ultimately, Rivka gives birth to twins and such very different twins, each with an extremely different approach to life. And Rivka's poignant question can be seen even more poignant and more pointed for all of us. Lama ze anochi, what should be the purposes of our lives? Many may answer that question that we are to have children, to carry our families forward, but it is not enough to bring forth descendants. Clearly to Rivka, it is not enough. It is not enough just to bring forth descendants, not just to bring them forth for the sake of bringing them forth, but to bring them forth for their generation to improve upon our generation, to be more good, to do more good, to bring more good into this world. We should not want our children to be worse off than we were. We should not even want them to remain stagnant where we were. We should live our lives to help them progress, to live even better lives than we lived. This though could lead us to ponder the great philosophical question of nature versus nurture. Are we who we are because of that which is innately inside of us, because of how we are born? Are we who we are because of that which nurtures us, because of how we are raised? It is not, however, a simple answer. It is not an either or. Each of us is a combination, a blend. Part of who we are is because of our nature, how we are born. Part of who we are is because of the nurture, how we are raised. Some of us seem to be more of one than the other, but we each have both components. The role of parents, teachers, and others who work with children is to help each of us become the best version of who we can be, in part by helping bring about the best of our innate nature, and in part by helping nurture, nurture us and raising us as optimally as can be. It is important for our future and for you, our kids, for your own best sake, that we adults be the adults in your lives. 
in the lives of you children for whom we are blessed to be in a position to play such an important role. It is important that we take our role and our responsibility seriously to nurture, to guide, to teach as optimally as possible for the sake of you now and for a better future. It is not enough to just bring forth descendants, not just to bring them forth for the sake of bringing them forth, but to bring them forth for their generation to improve upon our generation, to be more good, to do more good, to bring more good into this world. We should not want our children to be worse off than we were. We should not even want them to remain stagnant where we were. We should live our lives to help them progress, to live even better lives than we lived. Rivka is the embodiment of the choices we have with which we are faced on how to live. Rivka's children, her twin sons, do pose her quite a challenge. Her two sons are certainly quite different from each other. They have different foci in life, different priorities, different ways of living. She loves them both as they are both her sons. She tries her best to raise them both well, but clearly she has more influence over one than the other. That leads to one of the most challenging parts of this week's story. In those times of old, it had been the way for the oldest son to receive the birthright and the responsibility to carry forward. But Rivka realized that her younger son, Yaakov, was the one who had the right values and would be properly able to lead into the next generation. Not Esau the oldest, but Yaakov the youngest would bring about a better tomorrow for our family, for our people, for our future. And it seems that even Yitzchak may well have realized this, but perhaps he was not prepared to go against the ways of his times without his wife's manipulating the situation to at least on the surface fool him. Regardless, this seems to be far from an ideal story. It is not a model for us to ideally admire and seek to follow. As I have explained before though, the Torah is in part an account of what happened the stories of our past, not always as ideal as we might like, but the lessons, the lessons of God, the lessons of good, the lessons are well there for us to learn. Yes, Jacob lies to his father, but he primarily does so to obey and not disrespect his mother. Certainly quite a complicated situation. Our past has not been ideal has not been without flaws. Our ancestors, even our heroes, have not been ideal, have not been without flaws. It is though our responsibility, it is our challenge to learn from the past, to do our part in the present, to bring about a better future. To answer Rivka's question, why do I live? Why do I exist? Lama ze anochi? What a question. Quite a question for each of us to ponder. Why do I live? Why do I exist? What is the point of my life? And I deeply believe, and I welcome you in joining me in believing, but not just in believing, but in actually so living. The point of our lives, yes, in part it is to bring forth a new generation, but it is not enough to bring forth descendants not just to bring them forth for the sake of bringing them forth, but to bring them forth for their generation to improve upon our generation, to be more good, to do more good, to bring about more good into this world. We should not want our children to be worse off than we were. We should not even want them to remain stagnant where we were. We should live our lives to help them progress to live even better lives than we lived, to make the world better for our having been here. Rivka well questioned that and lived so accordingly. And it all began with her profound question at the beginning of this week's reading. Why do I live? Why do I exist? La maze anochi. What a question. Quite a question for each of us to ponder. Why do I live? Why do I exist? What is the point of my life? Certainly something for us each to ponder this Shabbat Toldot. 
which just so happens to be the Shabbat preceding the American holiday of Thanksgiving. And on Thanksgiving, it would be great for us each to both give thanks and to consider how we can better live for those in the future to be able to give thanks for how we lived to create the future with which we left them. As we hopefully especially each focus this week on the blessings we do have in our lives, all, that we, that, all with which we are blessed and for which we should give thanks, let's similarly so consider what blessings will we each leave for the world? When ultimately, many years from now, our time comes, what will be our lasting legacy? Please do ponder. Lama ze anochi. Why did you live? Why did you exist? What was the point of your life? What will have been your toldot? What will you have generated or produced in your life with which to leave the world for a better tomorrow. Each of our lives is filled with choices. Let us each make the best choices we can. And I give thanks for each of you and the good choices you have made, are making, and will make. Le Shabbat Shalom.